What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can add a skeleton loading view like the one you see here to your app. And after a little bit of time, the skeleton view goes away and we populate this data. So we're going to look at how you can set up the skeleton view, what options you have to customize it. We're also going to look at, of course, dismissing it, uh, basically to simulate data being loaded. So that said, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out a lot. Helps me make more videos for all of you. Uh, get excited. Subscribe if you're new. Get Xcode ready. Let me stop talking and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's begin by creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application and we're going to call this my skeleton app. Save it on your desktop and let's jump right in. So the first thing we want to do is bring in the framework that lets us create the skeleton view. So we're going to use CocoaPods to do that. Open up terminal, CD into your project, do a pod in it. And then we can do an open pod file. So the CocoaPod that we want to bring in is called skeleton view. Like so lowercase that p otherwise you're going to hit an error close text edit and run pod install give it a few seconds and what you care about is this installation message here in the green close xcode with the command w we want to open up the workspace so open project name .xc workspace expand our xcode window here and let's get into implementing this so as you saw in the beginning of the video, we're going to be looking at a table view. You can apply a skeleton view to basically anything, but since most times when you load something, it comes into a table or a collection, uh, it's the more common example. So to simulate it, we're going to set up a table view and populate the data after a delay, similar to if you were fetching data from an API or the internet, there would be a little latency. So let's start by setting up that table view. So we want to create an IB outlet for a table view. It'll be a table, table view. And we want to say the table view is going to have a row height of let's say 120. It's going to have an estimated, estimated row height if it decides to find it. There it goes, estimated row height of 120. We're also going to say the table views Man, I really can't type today. The table views data source is going to be self. And of course, we should bring in the data source up here. Like so. We're going to want to create a array called data, which will hold strings. We're going to want to add the two functions for the data source, which is number of rows return data dot count and cell for row let's cell equals table view dq cell with an identifier let's just put in some random string for now for index path and return cell we're gonna want to create a custom cell subclass and i'm gonna stick an image and label in there so you guys can see that you can customize uh, the cell as well as the skeleton that overlays it so right click the folder, new file, subclass a Coco or a Coco touch class that subclasses a UI table view cell. It's going to be a my table view cell. Leave this unchecked. Hit enter twice to create and save it. 
And as mentioned, let's add in two outlets in here. First one will be my label, it'll be a UI label. Second one will be my image view, and it'll be my image view. And let's also add a static property on here, which is the cell identifier. So now that this is all good to go, let's go set up our storyboard. So head on over to the storyboard. Let's bring a UI table view, UI table view onto our controller. Drop it on like so. Let's set up some constraints by doing zero all around. Let's right click this and connect our table view outlet to our table view. Select the table view. And we want to increment this number for prototype cells to be one. You'll see this newly created prototype cell selected and let's drag it down so we can put stuff in here. Before we do that, actually select the cell on the left hand side on the right, paste in that cell identifier we picked. And in this tab, change the class to match the uh, class that we created. Now we want to bring an image view and a label into the cell that matches our my image view and my label outlets that we made. So drop in an image. Let's set, let's set up some constraints. So we're going to say uh, 10 from the top, 10 from the left, 10 from the bottom, 100 tall and 100 wide, like so. And before we connect those outlets, actually, let's bring in that label as well. So grab a UI label, drop it on in. Now we're going to add some constraints. So let's say 10, 20, 10, and 10. Uh, also for the label selected, and we're going to set its line number to be uh, 0 which basically allows the number of lines for the label to be unlimited and wrap the text that it shows. And let's just change the text to be something a little longer so you guys can see that line wrapping. So here is some longer text in our cell. So it bumps down to two lines. Select, right click rather, and select the outlets that we've added. So in here you can see there's a my label, drag that to the label. And there's in my image view, drag that to your image view. So cool, that is our basic setup for the table in the storyboard. And like I mentioned, we're gonna have a delay uh, and that delay is gonna populate our data array. So in, uh, in view to load, let's create that delay block by saying dispatch queue, main, async after, now plus five seconds. And in here, we're basically going to say for underscore in 0 to 30, in data, we're just going to append some text. And finally, here we'll say self dot table view reload data. Now, in this table view, we want to change this identifier to be my table view cell dot identifier cast this uh, cell as a my table view cell and we're gonna say if data isn't empty my label rather cell dot my label dot text will be data and that element in data and let's also set an image for the my image view and we're going to say it's an image and we're going to use a system image called star and that should be our basic table view setup and now we can get to the goodness of putting a skeleton view over it so before we do that just hit command r to build and run make sure that your application loads and let me actually pick a simulator up here instead of my device which is plugged in so select the simulator and hit command R to build and run. Basically, we should start with an empty screen here. And in about five seconds, we should see our content get populated with uh, labels and images. And if it doesn't populate, there it goes. Okay, perfect. So 
that duration in the beginning when it was uh, loading, so to say, even though we've hard coded delayed it, we want to show that skeleton view. So to do that, it's pretty simple actually. We want to start by importing skeleton view. We want to bring in view did appear call super view did appear. We want to say the table view is skeleton skeletonable and on the table view we're going to say show skeleton using whoops show skeleton using and we can supply any color however skeleton view does a really nice job of giving you a nice color palette and the one i like to use is called i think wet asphalt which is a weird name for a color but let's go with it and the transition is going to be cross dissolve after 0.25 seconds and let's see what else do we need the other thing we want to do is change this data source to be a skeleton table view data source and you'll see an error pops up here like so because we need to add one more function and that function basically wants the identifier of our cell that we plan on showing so i believe let's see that function is collection view skeleton and it's the one that expects the reusable identifier as the return type and you can simply return the cell that identifier that we use down here and before we run it, we need to make one more adjustment in our storyboard. So we want to select our cell and make sure it's the cell to begin with and not just the content view. Come on over to the right side here and change this to be on for is skeletonable. Do that for the content view as well. Do that for the image view as well. And finally, you guessed it, do that for the label. So hopefully that is everything we need to do to get this skeleton view showing. Uh, we'll take a look at how to get the skeleton view to go away after this data has quote unquote loaded as well as some other colors they offer. So hit command R to build and run. Cross your fingers that I didn't break anything. And awesome, look at that. We have our skeleton view. Uh, so you notice that there's no gradient in the skeleton view. So the framework actually gives you some options to show a gradient, different colors and such. But before we look at that, let's see how we can make this go away once our uh, delayed block here is called. Because right now, it just stays, and that's not the point. So to make the skeleton view go away, it's actually quite simple. Um, after we've populated the data, we can simply say skeleton view um, stop animation and we can also say view let's see table view we would need to put a put self before this because we're in a block uh, but now we can say self dot view and we can say hide skeleton and then the table will reload so we should see our data so hit command r again and after five seconds, we should see this guy go away. So there it goes. Uh, after five seconds, it went away. And actually, you saw it kind of flashed when it went away. So you can actually stop the animation, I believe, uh, with your own with your own animation across dissolve. Maybe it's on hide. There it is. Okay, we can reload true. And transition is going to be again cross dissolve after 0 0.25 and before we run this again let's take a look at another color selection that they offer this one is called concrete and I like to use this one as well hit command R to build and run and you can see we've got this gray placeholder skeleton give it a few seconds and we see our data has quote unquote loaded so the skeleton has gone away so before we wrap up, let's take a look at the gradient option that I mentioned. So instead of saying uh, show skeleton, you can actually say this 
dot show uh, animated gradient and animated skeleton. So as the name implies, and let me actually stick it in here so you guys can see it. Uh, as the name implies, it'll animate left to right of the shimmer effect. So it's a little subtle, so it's a little tough to pick up on sometimes, but we've got this nice animation going across. And actually, finally, let's uh, look at that gradient. So again, table view, show animated gradient. And by default, it uses some default colors, but again, we can override all of this stuff. So basically using gradient, and we're gonna use a base color of let's say link. Animation is nil. Transition, again, cross dissolve after 0 0.25. This error should go away, like so. Hit Command R to build and run. And boom, there you go. So you can see that it's uh, basically animating as well as showing the gradient color from the lighter blue to the darker. And there you have it. That's how you can add a skeleton view to your app. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me make more videos for all of you. Subscribe if you're new. If you have any feedback or questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Uh, implementing this with custom designs sometimes can be a pain, so happy to help. And the last thing I'll mention is uh, implementing a skeleton view in your own code is definitely doable. The reason that I am making the video with this framework is because you would honestly be doing a lot of redundant work that's been done for you already. And there's a reason this framework is extremely popular across uh, the iOS community and also industry. So I definitely would encourage you if you'd like to take a look at how this is built under the hood, you can go to GitHub and take a look. Um, you can definitely implement your own also, but hopefully this overview gave you a good idea of how to get this set up with this pre-built CocoaPod, and you can drop it into your apps. So that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.